welcome back to the nonprofit show. We are so glad that you're here. We're also so glad that Micah is back with us again. Uh, we have with us Micah James from Bloomerang, and she serves as the manager of professional services. You know, perfect timing to have you back here, Micah, to talk about it's not over yet. And what the it's <laughs> is, is the year. The year is not over yet. And so she's brought with us today some last minute tips for your nonprofit's year end success. So Super excited to nerd out with you on that. If you join us in the green room, you learn Micah is a nerd through and through. Uh, there is no stopping her with that nerdiness. But moving on into us, if we haven't met you yet, Julia Patrick is here. I have to tell you, Julia, you're a nerd too, my friend. And you know that's a compliment, but Julia is CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, her personal nerd, but I can be anyone's personal nonprofit nerd, a CEO of the Raven Group. And I love having these conversations with our guests and we wouldn't be able to have them if it weren't for our besties, our presenting sponsors. So thank you to the team over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. Most of these companies really have been with us on this journey from the very beginning, helped us to produce, ready for this, drum roll, a thousand episodes. So we passed 900, moving towards a thousand. I know, Micah, it has been phenomenal. And we've had great conversations, which if any of you want to go back and listen to them, you know, you can start now. I do not think you'll be done by the end of the year, but you can try. <laughs> uh, you can find us on streaming broadcast podcast, and you can also download the app. And later today, our conversation that we're having right here and now with Micah will be uploaded onto all of these channels and you can find us. So fun fact, ladies and, and everyone watching and listening, I'm traveling today through Sunday and I know that I've got the nonprofit show in my queue uh, to listen to you on, on podcasts. So again, glad to be back with us, Micah. You've joined us before. It was so glad to see your name on the roster for today. But again, for everyone watching and listening, if you don't know her yet, Micah James, Manager, Professional Services at Bloomerang. Welcome back. Thank you so much. It's always a joy to be here. Love having these conversations. Yeah. You know, I love having these conversations with you, Micah, because I feel like you are um, excited and engaged, but at the same time, you're very calm and manageable. Uh, you help us to say, yeah, we can do that. And I think a, for a lot of us in the nonprofit sector, this time of the year, I mean, it's so stressful. We're worried about our goals. We're worried about our pace, keeping up our health, our family our coworkers, I mean, it's a lot. And so uh, to have you on as a calm voice of reason is is really good, I think, at this point in time. Well, so, Julia, she yeah. did witness to us, she's a parent now of six. So clearly, <laughs> clearly she can manage chaos, you know, and, and multiple everything. But yeah, let's do dive into, uh, you're going to share with us, Micah, what is your year end message. And this is really for nonprofits because there's a lot of messages, right, going on out there. So help us identify how we find our nonprofit message. Absolutely. You know, Giving Tuesday, I don't know if you've caught your breath yet um, from Giving Tuesday. It was just a few moments ago. Uh, but I always encourage nonprofits, whether it's for Giving Tuesday or anything you're doing between now and the end of the year, mm -hmm. to be your authentic self. Um, there's so much noise <laughs> and let's just call it what it is. There's so much noise between, um, you know, giving Tuesday and the year in year end, because everybody either took a template and just changed a few words or, you know, uh, yeah. and, and, and goodness gracious, we, we don't have time. We don't have our own marketing departments. We don't have those kind of things, but if you can find a way to be your genuine, authentic self, in this season, do it. You know, if you're a food pantry, show off food. If you're children's, you know, do something with children, show children's drawings or things that kids are doing and those kind of things. Don't just do cookie cutter things because cookie cutter things mm -hmm. get ignored. Um, and so 
it's really about connecting with not only your community. So where are you located? What's your context? Mm -hmm. But also what do you do in that community to solve that community's problems? And so, you know, I've, I've worked for lots of nonprofits and in, we've, we've done the generic and we've done the unique. And I will tell you hands down that it's the unique, um, special things that connect with the community. So. I love that permission. That's what I hear, right? It's permission to, to really lean into yourself. And I'm right there with you. Like, you know, I I feel seen very validated, (laughs) like, oh yeah, we're just going to change something from the previous year or from another person's campaign of what we've seen. And there is a lot of noise. That's something, Julia, we've talked about a lot. Like there is a lot of noise Mm -hmm. uh, with everything. So, you know, standing out within a $1.8 million or sorry, 1.8 million registered nonprofits, that in and of itself is anxiety ridden. Yeah. And, you know, in a minute, we're going to talk about videos and segmenting and all of those kind of things. But remember, you don't have to send your message to the whole world. You don't have to solve the whole world's problems. Like you are uniquely situated for a reason. Like, you know, I'm here in Oklahoma. Like Mm -hmm. you may have people on your email list that are all over the country, but talk about what's going on where you are. Mm -hmm. Um, And so whether that's, what, and, and talk about what's happening in 2023. Uh, yeah. And so we all know that there's been headwinds and micro donors, those small donors. Talk about it. People need to hear about what's actually happening in your nonprofit. So if you're behind goal, it's okay to talk about, hey, this was our goal. As we head into the end of the year, we're at 800,000 towards a million. We're not there yet. Could you do this X, Y, and Z? And that will feed X, Y, and Z. Like talk about what's happening in your nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Show what it means in your context, in your place, in your mission. You know, Julia, that that really catches me because, you know, we talk a lot about people want to join winning teams. And so, Micah, when you say, when you say, like, talk about your shortfall of funding, I wonder how many people are really comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Well, think about, but we also have those people that want to help you get over that finish line to make yes. you a winning team, yes. right? I have had, I have been in those situations where I've been in a matching campaign. Think about matching campaigns. You tell people like, I have five thousand dollars and I need to make five thousand, ten thousand dollars. How many people? I've had people call me and say, mm-hmm. when you're short, I'll make the next thousand, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, so wow. there are people who want to help you win, but if you don't tell them, they can't. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I always have this mantra of like, you can't say no on behalf of your donor. Your donors right. have to be allowed to yeah. say yes or no on behalf of themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's not that you're not winning. Tell them why. Like, mm-hmm. hey, guys, look around. Groceries are more expensive. Yeah. Uh, gas is more expensive. Yeah. I mean, it may not be now, but it was for most of the year. Yeah. But yeah. like, tell them why they're, they have common sense. Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) like we don't live in a vacuum. So, I mean, I think people will understand that you're working your patooties off Mm -hmm. and like, you're still coming up short and there might be somebody out there who wants to help you get over that, that finish line and help you win. You know, I love that you kind of pulled us back in to, make sure that we are not answering those questions for our donors, that we are letting our donors say yes or no. And I I think that's profound because I think we, we tend to think this ourselves, you know, we Mm -hmm. tend to to make all this drama and create these (laughs) scenarios in our head without ever reaching back out. And so the next thing I I really want to get your opinion on is how we do communicate to those stakeholders, understanding that, We have different folks, you know, that we have the donors, we have the volunteers, we have board members. I'm always amazed in in board service how often we are only communicated at during the board meeting. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, we're not used as a resource in, in what you just talked about. So I'm wondering if you can kind of help us understand, 
how we can refine this a little bit, segmenting some groups and, and what that's going to look like and, and how that might impact us. Yeah, I mean, we we all talk differently in different ways in our lives, right? We talk to our children differently than we talk to a room full of professionals. Then we talk to our girlfriends when we're sitting around having, you know, a cup of tea. Um, so why wouldn't we use that same application when we're talking to different segments of donors? Not everybody's going to hear you the same way. Not everybody's going to be at the same level of giving. Uh, and, and not everybody's going to understand your mission in the same way. Your board members are going to have an intimate understanding of what's happening. So they don't need you to speak in basics to them. They need, they might want very detailed understanding. Hey, y'all. You know, at the last board meeting, we told you X, Y, and Z, this is where we are. You know, if each one of the board members did this before the end of the year, like we could do this. Volunteers, these are some of your most passionate, involved people. Mm -hmm. They, they're, they're, you know, sweat and tears go into, but lots of times we forget to even ask them for money. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so they may not have a lot of money to give, or they may even surprise you. <laughs> And they've never been asked. And so these are the people you really need to talk about. You've been there. You've been in the, the workroom, the, the food pantry. You see how dollars turn into to this. If you did this, then it becomes that. And when you come on your next shift, the shelves will be full. The, you know, all of those kind of things. And talk about, you know, what's happening before them. Uh, and then, you know, when we talk about other segments, Think about how it's impacting them and talk about, you know, do you have a front desk crew that comes into thank you letters? Imagine if that thank you letter stack was this tall, like just talk yeah. about different segments in ways that it's going to impact you. Now, every time I suggest something like this with a nonprofit, they're like, Micah, you're telling me to do too many things and I can't do it. And you're making my list too small. Mm -hmm. Pick one. Mm -hmm. If, if the, you know, making a unique voice is the only thing you do this year. Fantastic. If you've already worked on that and you're working on refining it and making it better. Mm -hmm. Great. Tweak it a little bit and work on segmenting this year. Like just add Legos again, you know, my world, like <laughs> just add Lego bricks to the stack and exponentially you will build, you know, a masterpiece over time. Don't try to tackle it all at once. You won't do it with excellence if you spread yourself too thin. Um, so just figure out what you're going to attack one at a time, depending on the size of your, your staff and your volunteers and all the people that are helping you and then see how you can attack it. Makes so much sense. Right. And, and I think about this, like we forget perhaps that it's not a one size fits all. And I love how you demonstrated like, we don't talk to our girlfriends the same way as we show up to speak, you know, at, at a board meeting, just yeah. to, you know, like there's so many different ways that we do use our unique voice and unique narrative, mm -hmm. like practice that. And then I also really appreciate how you, you know, if you choose one of these things that will make a difference and just keep doing that makes me think of James Clear, the book, you know, Atomic Habits. I don't know if you've read yeah. that book yet or, you know, but really looking at how do we continue to stack habits? And then before you know it, like you have built this masterpiece Lego set of, you know, <laughs> 5,000 pieces or whatever that looks like. Talk to us how we can move that into video because you had mentioned earlier, yeah. you know, like utilizing video you're going to tell us the value of a 90 second video on social platforms, as well as email. What does that look like? Yeah, Julia, I think you and I were talking before everything got started today that, you know, in the, in the stack of your giving Tuesday emails, you only saw a couple of videos come through and all of the hundreds of emails you got it kind of connects it back to that unique voice. Yeah. Uh, when I was doing fundraising, uh, the last nonprofit I worked for was a, was a, homeless, sustainable housing nonprofit. Um, and one of the things we did is we did a, just a simple tour of our facility. It was during COVID. Nobody could come in. So we were like, hey, this is a day in the life of our you know, facility. Let me take you back to the storeroom and let me take you around. Um, 
it just connects people to you personally in a way that text can't, you know, going back, I'm a, I'm an old educator going back to learning styles, you know, tactile, visual, you know, reading, you know, we have to open all the doors of how people engage with us. And vi- there's something about video that just says, Hey, I see Julia. I see Jared. I see Micah. Like I know them. Um, that brings the text to life off the page. Um, 90 seconds or less is like that perfect sauce of not too long, not too short of just letting me say, hey, how are you? This is us. Come on in. Don't you want to be a part of this? Uh, And uh, not, you know, I don't, if you summarize what's in the text, then they don't even have to do the TLDR didn't read. And uh, they're ready to click on the button and uh, it's ready to go. Yeah. You know, I think, Micah, I love this. I when you the moment you said this, Jared, I was reminded of um, during COVID, um, we had that shelter, an, an animal welfare shelter. I think it was in the Midwest somewhere, and of course, all their volunteers couldn't come in, and it was their lifeblood. And um, yet, they still had animals they needed to adopt out and care for and fundraise and all that. And so the CEO just took her phone and said, I'm just going to walk down and show you what's going on. And they had some of the most successful engagement that they had ever had, pandemic aside. And so I think now today with phones being so brilliantly um, constructed and all of the editing software, even if even if you don't want to edit, right, um, this is achievable. You don't have to hire a, a studio or agency necessarily to produce this, right? It can be a yeah. little gorilla style. And I think we worry about like, oh, it's not edited and it's not polished and it's a little rougher on the edges. I think, you know, don't make it t- too Blair Witch, right? <laughs> but uh, that, that <laughs> dates me. It dates oh me to say that, really. Um, but don't make it too shaky. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah. but, I think there's some authenticity to be like, hey, this is me. This is my phone. Like, mm-hmm. come come walk around with me as I as I do this important work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there are some some cautionary tales. I, I'm a real protector of privacy and those kind of things. I I I hate uh nonprofit tourism, so like don't do a good thing and like show it off and those kind of things. That's not what it's all about. But showing your donors the mission, you know, without showing faces of patrons and participants and all of that kind of thing, I think you can really communicate some really meaningful things in a kind of authentic, uh, rough around the edges kind of way. I'm so <laughs> glad you mentioned that. And and I'm right there with you on Blair Witch, right? So for anyone that doesn't <laughs> know that, that reference, I'm not going to recommend that you watch that movie because yeah. I thought it was horrible, the cinematography for sure. You know, but there is some, some, I don't know, boundaries we do need to be aware of, right? When it comes to this and there's so many other ways, you know, I love that you're saying that, that we can still accomplish a video without, you know, creeping into that privacy space that is not where any of us need to be. Uh, that That's really important. What about Mike? I'm really curious, curveball question, you know, a lot of staff work remotely, yourself included, myself included, a lot of programming now is done remotely. And so we really don't have a campus or a room or a shelter. Like we don't have that brick and mortar to tour. How can we still accomplish this video message when we're all remote and even perhaps our programming? Very good question. You know, that, that is a really good question. I think storytelling um, says a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just our conversation here today, um, captured on video, if we showed a 90, you know, second clip of this in an email, um, you know, if we went back to, if our, if our nonprofit was about moms, right. And we went, went back to that set, like piece about us talking passionately about professional moms, I think a 90 second clip about our conversation could make a huge impact to somebody who feels um, compelled to support moms and professionals and those kind of things. So I think, you know, whether it's a conversation with board members and participants or staff people who see the everyday work, I think there are still ways that you can capture those stories, even if you don't have a brick and mortar um, place. 
thank you for that. Cause you know, I, I think about how many organizations have shifted their program delivery and, you know, the staff wow. workforce and what that looks like. And so I just wanted to, to ask that question. Cause I'm sure we have viewers and listeners that are going, we can't do that. We can't right. do that. But guess what? <laughs> you can. Mike, Absolutely. Just, yeah. Some great opportunities. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about that landing page on the website, right? Like I, I believe at this point of time, absolutely everyone has a website, <laughs> has a web page. What so. does that landing page now need to look at, like um, because we're in this, you know, final push of the calendar year? Yeah. You know, in our world at Bloomerang, we have several options that you can make this really feel um, friendly and frictionless and all of those kind of things mm -hmm. to, to the donor. You know, that's the main point is you want to make it as easy as possible. Like, oh, I'm inspired. Click donate without a lot of hairy, scary steps in between. Um, the other thing is uh, just really again, you know, from wherever they're coming, whether it's an email or social media or anything like that, you want to make sure that it continues to look and feel and sound like you. The thing that jars me the most when I go to any, you know, whether it's a, a website that I'm buying something from or donating to is I click on that button and all of a sudden it's bare or it doesn't look like the company or nonprofit that I'm working with anymore. And then all of a sudden I feel like, am I in no person's land anymore? Like, is this the, is this, I mean, am I about to be spam a lot? Like, is this, uh, so you want to make sure that they feel safe and secure and all of those kind of things by making it colors the same, you know, if you can put a compelling image that's aligned with your branding, you know, all of that is possible with the right software. And so just making sure that the donor is comfortable and, you know, easy peasy all the way through. Um, and that's really, and test it. Like if you haven't gone through your own donor experience yourself, right. do it today. Like before the end of the day, like donate a dollar and see how it feels all the way through. Um, so you know what your donors are doing. You know, Absolutely. I, I, I so appreciate you saying this because I think one of the problems is that we internally become fatigued with what we think what we're attracted to something shiny. In other words, <laughs> we tend to forget that consistency rules the day. So mm -hmm. our colors, our messaging, our vocabulary, our imagery needs to be consistent. And I, I work with more nonprofits that are like, yeah, we need to refresh our logo. We need, and it's like, generally you don't, you just need to make sure that everything's in alignment and that you keep moving forward. I mean, Jared and I say this all the time, 1.8 million registered nonprofits. There are a lot more out there th that are not <laughs> registered. That's the dirty little secret. But the mm -hmm. reality is that, you know, there's a lot of competition yeah. for time and attention. So every mm -hmm. time we deviate from that and we send a new message, we're just shooting ourselves in the foot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, yeah, I'm sorry. I had to get on my soapbox. No, you know. no, it's absolutely right. You know, we're all we're all hit with that. And, you know, I, I had an experience the other day where I'm just like the website was green and blue and then the landing page was like yellow. And I'm like, hold on. Is this the same thing? Yeah. Did I just get a pop-up from a, and so you want, I mean, like even, even simple things like that can make a donor go, Hmm. And every time a donor go stops in the process, I'm a nerd. There's a formula out there that you can Google that talks about incentives and friction and all of the things that make a donor pause along the, the way. Mm -hmm. Every time you make a donor do that, that's less likely to donate in the case. So. Right. Mike, I'm curious about the pop-up, right? And and I this might be a curveball as well. Is that something we should still have right now at year of end? Uh, should we take it off if we have a pop-up like on that landing page? What good are question. you seeing is best right now? Right. Good. Very good question. Honestly, I think, uh, you know, we have different ways of doing that. I think, you know, embedded codes and things that naturally pop up. Again, if it feels and looks like your website, it's less likely to be suspicious than things that are just like, click, 
<laughs> yes. um, like those ads of the olden days. Like I have, I have nightmares about, you know, those old windows pop-ups of the olden days. It doesn't yeah. look like that anymore if you do it right. Um, and so if you do it right and you do it well, and it looks like you, it doesn't have the same feel, um, of the, so it's really up to you and, and what you want your experience to be. Yeah. Great, great question. Well, you know, we're glad that you pop up anytime with us on the nonprofit <laughs> show. Uh, we're going to, we're going to let you keep doing that because we love Thank your you. energy. Um, if you, if you were with us in the green room, Micah is a mother of six. I kind of am assuming these are younger kids too. Well, 10 to 18, all the range. The Bless tough your heart. heart. That's what we say in the South. Bless your heart. <laughs> Well, it's really always such a joy to have you with us. You know, we love all of our friends at Bloomerang. Every time you come on, you bring something completely different. And um, it's always super cool. And so thank you. Thank you. Micah James, Manager of Professional Services with our friends over at Bloomerang. One of the things in, that I'll say about Bloomerang, and I know that, that Jared would echo this, is that you do a masterful job at communicating a lot of best practices and strategies for free without any connectivity to your product. So if you want to get, you know, good information about what's going on across the sector, um, you can go to Bloomerang and really get educated on so many, many things that will, you know, weave into the success of your your nonprofit journey. And so I want to commend you and your team on that because that's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> and uh, it, it's a, it's really an amazing thing. Um, Jarrett and I are so delighted that you would be here. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, Nonprofit Nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. Again, we have amazing support, starting with Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These folks join us day in and day out, and um, it's really an amazing, amazing thing. Miss Jarrett, you're getting on a plane and heading south. I am. I know it, it will be the here soon. So I'm going to miss tomorrow's Friday ask and answer. I'll be back on Monday. Uh, Micah, thank you so much. This is again, like a really, you know, timely conversation for many of us. Uh, we're all still in this whirlwind with giving Tuesday, having just taken yeah. place, which, you know, still catching our breath um, and moving toward to, you know, really that, that end goal because December 31 is coming, coming soon. But you know, as we wrap up today, I just want to say thank you again to, to you, Micah, and to the entire Bloomerang team uh, for joining us because every single month we have a representative from each of our sponsors uh, that join us to bring conversations to light like this one. And it's always a pleasure. I'm always learning, really. Yeah. I, I, I am. I mean, I've been in the you know sector 20 years and I'm still learning. I still walk away with a big aha. So, um, so thank you for that. But yeah, as we wrap up today, we always end with this mantra. Um, and Julie and I have noticed that even though we've said it nearly a thousand times, mm -hmm. it always rings yeah. a little different, right? It's the same words, but it always has like a little different meaning, mm -hmm. but it is to stay well so you can do well. Thanks, Micah. And for all of you that joined us, see you tomorrow. <laughs>